what is going on guys a little back day action uh some very old school type movements today um so this is a very very old school bent over row a little bit of an incline in uh barbell row you saw a clip of arnold doing these i actually put it right here side to side right here for y'all so this is a very very old school movement as you can see it's the same movement i'm actually bringing the bar kind of towards my lower lats so i'm really hitting those lower lats um in this movement every other set i switched it so that first set i hit lower lats and i think this set i hit more middle back so guys uh this is such a great great barbell row exercise again i would still keep your same t uh basic barbell row in there on the floor this is just a great this is a great every now and then to get that extra stretch again wouldn't do this every time when you do a barbell row but you see how that bar, bar, bar that barbell is not even touching the floor you got to bring it way down to touch that floor um again i'm kind of letting it hang at the bottom for a brief second and then bringing it back up is the hair majestic too <laughs> Boy, Daly's filming this, uh, so he's always a great filmer for me. So, um, again, guys, this is uh, guys. When you do this exercise, don't wear a belt or anything like that. Don't wear straps. You know, go. This is a, one of those workouts where you need to go raw, like they did old school. You know, you know, you see Arnold in that clip. He didn't wear a belt. He didn't wear straps. I mean, they didn't do. They didn't have those back then, guys. I mean, they used pure chalk. So, you know, it just kind of gives you that little sense of you know old school type training. You know, it's like. You wear straps and everything like that. You know, I know some days your back's gonna feel iffy. And it's like, okay, I need to wear a belt today. I just wouldn't do that exercise that day. So um, again, that's a great exercise to do. So definitely add that to your training every now and then. Ooh, we got some pullover action. That flannel hoodie is seen as last days. Uh, that thing is, I think it's a large too. I'm busting through that thing. <laughs> and we're all bulked up now too. So <laughs> we're definitely not shredded right now. So, uh, you know, it's time to get bigger. So. This was really a lat focused type workout. Had to take that flannel off because it was really tight on my lats. I felt like I was gonna bust through it. So put this extra large shirt on, so it was a whole lot better. So um, this is really, I mean, again, like I just said, this is a lat focused workout we had the other day. So uh, pullovers, pull, guys, you see this picture of me right here on the side? So what really grew my lats these last few years is pullovers, man. And I go, these are 100-pound dumbbells here. I can easily go heavier if I wanted to, but I really just want to feel that stretch. Um, so basically, guys, if you want to work your lats on this, again, I do these on chest day as well. Um, but again, the, yesterday was back day, so I really f flared those elbows out. That way the lats are pulling the weight up and down. See how I keep the elbows flared out? So that in that case, see if I wanted to work the chest, I would keep the elbows, see, I would keep the elbows flared out at the bottom of the movement when I'm hitting the ground, but then if once I bring it back up, I'm bringing those elbows back inside like they're kissing each other. Not really, but, um, so guys, um, <clears throat> again, if your gym has a puller machine, that is just as good as this. If anything, the only difference in the dumbbell and the machine is that you're actually controlling the movement, not the machine controlling your movement, if you know what I mean. So you're the one placing your elbows in a certain spot with the free weights. You're the one pulling it, which is why I like it this way, the dumbbell old old school way. And again, this is an old school workout today. So we're doing a lot of stuff like this th that they did back in the 80s and 90s. And I just love that style of training. It's a whole lot more fun, at least in my opinion. So, um, But anyway, guys, this is great. It's just so good for those lats and the serratus and the and the triceps as well, and the upper chest. So again, on chest day, I do these after my incline bench because that's the only time I really feel it is because, because my chest is already pumped and I just get that extra squeeze on that upper chest. It feels incredible. So I will make a YouTube video later this week, probably on Monday, about pullovers. So uh, that's great. So, oh, here we go. How about this? Again, another very old school type lat pull down. So as you guys can tell, it's not super heavy, of course, because... Nothing is bracing your legs, so I'm going just heavy enough to where that those lats are really flat, like at the very top of the movement. It's kind of pulling me slightly, so that's the kind of benefit of this is that because you're not bracing to that seat, you have to use your core, your legs, just a little bit of everything. It's a little good. It's a nice switch up. Again, I don't recommend doing this. Uh, you're gonna see later in this video about arm development, but uh, 
kind of relates back to this. So once you already have some back development and stuff, you can start doing stuff like this to really challenge your muscles. So again, if you're a beginner, I do not recommend doing this. Not in a safety matter, it's just because it's not really beneficial to you yet. So once you get some lat development and back development, throw this in, you're gonna love this. So again, don't go heavy because, or not heavy enough to where it's gonna pull you up completely. So you see at the very top of the movement, it's kind of pulling me slightly, that's what you want. It's that extra stretch, because you don't get that on normal lat pull downs because you're bracing that seat. So again, I'm, I think I'm going about 130 pounds here. Um, again, I'm kind of, see where I'm pulling it? I'm pulling it behind that little brace pad thing where your uh, knees where your knees sit on this machine. So I'm not pulling straight down, I'm pulling it kind of behind me. So these rhomboids, upper back and lats are getting hammered on this movement. So uh, again, see that little stretch at the top that you get? I hold it for a brief second and then bring it back down. Again, you don't feel that on normal lat pull down, but again, you can't go that heavy. So this is why I don't recommend you beginners doing this quite yet. So again, throw that in for a nice old school type change. Okay, so this was the exercise I was talking about earlier when I'm talking about uh, improvise on this machine. So, again, once you become advanced, uh, well, one thing, first things first, I really don't like this machine that this gym has. So, if it was an underhand grip, I would feel it more on that lower back. But, you know, I don't like machines that have that kind of grip. So, here, again, this is a lat-focused workout. So, as you can see, we're grabbing outside that little grip on the outside. So, what that does is it's going to flare your elbows out so that way those lats are in prime position to be worked so again you can you, you can work your lats with a normal grip but you really don't attack that you don't attack that really that really tip top of that lat so i kind of stuttered my words for a second um so uh yeah this works that very tip top part of that lat it gives you that extra little sliver on that lat so um but yeah, that's what this works. And just the whole lat in general, guys, just, it, we're really stretching the, these lats out today. Um, really just kind of some fun exercises in there. And this is, again, this is not, I wouldn't say this is an old school movement. It's just very imp improvised movement that us advanced lifters can do to really give us that extra challenge. So, and it also keeps it fresh, guys. You know, I've been working out for eight years, pretty much advanced lifter at this point. So I really need to change things up. So, Really changed shit up. Oh, sorry. Try not to cuss. Bleep that. Um, I went all bent. Oh, double arm action. So, uh, again, I really don't do this with two arms, but I kind of just want to see how it felt. It actually felt incredible. Um, again, I could have went three plates. I don't know why I didn't. This was my top set on this exercise. I think I did eight reps. Again, guys, totally recommend this if you're an advanced lifter. You beginners can try it, see what you think. I just don't think because you have to really have to have a good mind muscle connection for that certain exercise. So, um, oh boy, another old school movement, the meadow row. So again, works your last. You can really see that lat working through that extra large shirt. Uh, so, um, basically guys, you want to get a little barbell, put, you know, plate and a half, whatever you want to do weight wise. It's fine. Uh, again, this really works your grip strength as well. Cause you're grabbing that part of the barbell that's you know the thicker part of it so uh again i really recommend doing this in a corner of a gym but you know all of it, there was no space in this gym to do it so i just kind of did on the middle of the floor put a plate there it didn't move so um again as you can see those really keeping them in tight so it's almost like a dumbbell row but again as you can see i'm bracing myself on my knee there so it's almost like a really athletic position which i like that's why i like this exercise um Kind of using your body to brace yourself, using your own body. Again, if you're a beginner, try this out. You may like it, you may not. Again, this took me a while to connect to this exercise. I would say it's pretty, at least intermediate. I wouldn't say it's beginner, but it's definitely intermediate in advance. So, um, again, I, I don't do this exercise that often, not in a bad way. It's just because, I, I, again, I like to keep things fresh and then add stuff in every now and then to make it fun. Um, but, yeah, this is a metal row. I love doing these, man. This it's, I mean, my lats were on fire, fire after these sets. Uh, we did four sets of about eight to 10 reps. Um, that was about the rep range we did today, eight to 10. So um, again, we'll keep, see I'm keeping those elbows in tight. So it's the same thing as dumbbell row. It's just a little bit different, a little bit different. Because um, again, the dumbbell rows, you can use the bench to brace yourself. But here you're bracing against your own body. Again, which I like. So um, again, not jerking it, keeping it nice and smooth. 
you know, trying to connect all the way up and down. You guys that are, I see work out back in the gym, I will say this about back. It is definitely the hardest muscle to train. Not intensity-wise like legs, but you're talking about my muscle connection. Back is easily the hardest. You're not just rowing and pulling weight back. It, it, you are can my muscle connecting every rep. Um, I would say chest is the second hardest, and then I would say legs. So that, that's just my personal opinion. So... And the reason for that is because back has so many, so many muscles, guys. I mean, you're talking about, you know, tens to twenty to th almost thirty. And this, there's so many muscles back there. I mean, there's some that I don't probably haven't even hit yet because there's so many. So, um, oh, again, that was the metal row, guys. I totally recommend that every now and then. So, all right, so we got some really just basic rows here. This is textbook rows, I would call it. This is what your NASM, this is what your personal trainers say to do on back. Um, is it good? Oh, yeah, definitely good. I mean, my lower back, this is where I was working here, that middle to lower back. Um, again, just really squeezing that back at the end. Felt great. But understand this, guys. You need to have some sort of workout every now and then to where you get nasty and ugly with it. This is not, definitely not fun, okay? This is not a fun exercise. Um, you will see a lot of clips on my Instagram and stuff where I get nasty and ugly with this exercise. And there was actually a back day video with my buddy Chance that I work out with sometimes. We got nasty and ugly on this exercise. We went all out on this exercise. We went full stack. Again, that, that's fun, okay? That, that's trying to beat each other up, trying to beat his number, whatever he got. That, that's what working out's about. But today we're just going back to foundation work. So this is what keeps our back in good shape year round. So again, every now and then go back to workouts like this to where you really feel that stretch. And like I said earlier about that back day with Chance, so I, we were full stacking this. And I told Chance, get, get your ugly set in. We called it ugly sets. So what we did was we literally went full stack and jerked the living hell out of it. But we still worked it out because me and Chance, we, we have, I mean, it took me a while to connect with my back. But, man, once I got it, man, I was able to full stack and go ugly with it and still work it out and still get it pumped. So, again, once you can connect with a muscle, guys, you can go heavy and ugly at the same time and still work it out. That's the beautiful part about bodybuilding is you can do that. And you saw a lot of Arnold clips back in the day where he would shoulder raise. It looked ugly, but it was beautiful at the same time. I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where you got to connect to a muscle to make it grow, man. You can't just go through the motions. Ooh, here's another old school type movement here. Oh, man, this is this killed my lower back, guys. All right, so... You see that stretch at the end. So we got that little low box seat there. So what that does is we're sitting a little bit lower than we normally would on that little bench. So again, I'm using that little bench. It's kind of where my you know little thingy is. So it uh it kind of braces me right there. So that way I can really lock in place. And so I'm stretching that back like crazy at the bottom there. So I'm grabbing that handle a little bit on the lower lower half side, and then I'm pulling up. So I'm really hitting those that lower back and a little bit of that middle back too. All right, guys. Oh boy, look at this. Great sweatpants season. I tell you, we'll be filling these bad boys out by December. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. So, uh, a little rhomboid work now. Um, mostly rhomboids. A little bit of upper back, too. No lats here. Um, so, you can see we're really sitting really high on that bench. Um, that way, our, I'm basically putting my chest, pretty much the lower chest, on the edge of that top part of the bench. And the rest is hanging over so that allows that upper back to really hunch over <clears throat> and so here's another angle here as you can see how far down my upper back is that little round to that so that's putting that back in position to be worked so again i'm kind of flaring these elbows out i'm not tucking them in again if i want to work more middle back i'll tuck the elbows in and turn the dumbbells inside keep it pronated but here what i'm really doing is keeping those dumbbells flared out so we're really hitting the rear delts as well at the top. My rear delts were actually hurting after this in a good way. 
So this is really that, that upper back shelf, that rear delt rhomboid upper back area. This is great to do, um, especially after an upper back movement. So guys, this is what I just said reminded me, I was gonna say this in the video. So if you're lacking on a body part, let's say uh, biceps or something, or let's say brachialis, what you wanna do is you wanna do a back, so do your compound movement, a hammer curl movement, and then after that, do an isolation movement right after. So it kind of forces blood into that certain muscle. So if, you're, if you just do bicep and then a tricep movement, I don't recommend doing that if you have a weak bicep. That's what I did for my biceps the last few years. I've killed them, guys. I mean, I've been blowing up my biceps like crazy, especially in this last year. I mean, I put an inch on them last off season. So it's just what I did was I changed my routine a little bit on arm day. I put two specific arm days in my routine. Like I train arms twice a week for a whole year straight and it added one inch to them. So guys, if you're lacking a body part, I would most recommend you put a specific day for that muscle group twice a week at least for six to eight weeks and see if you get any progress. If you don't, it's most likely you're trading. So you got to change something up. So it's a good advice tip right there. So a little behind the neck pull down action. Really hits the, you know, rear delt. Same exact thing we just worked, just different. We didn't superset this. I despise supersetting, guys. I do not recommend supersetting ever. And the reason I don't recommend supersetting, guys, is because let's say you're doing arms, you do bicep and then a tricep movement. Problem with that is, guys, especially on a compound lift, is that let's say you're doing a barbell curls and you go over and do a close grip bench. Uh, one, you're going to be fatigued as hell. And those those two exercises are meant to be, you know, at least two to three minute rest in between. So, and guess what? That's how people get hurt. And that's basically CrossFit training, which I don't recommend either. So, you know, just, you know, take your time between sets, guys. Don't rush anything, man. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, that little back workout, kind of an old school type lift. I loved it. Um, so, yeah, guys, um, I'm pretty much going to be – so, right now, I am currently – so, right now, guys, as I said earlier, I am um, back on cardio for about probably a month, about three, four times a week. So, that way, my metabolism goes up. So, um because about a month ago, it was pretty hard for me to eat like eight ounces of beef, which is a problem. So um, back on cardio until about peak bulk, probably about November, no, probably December. Cut it out till February. Cut starts in February. It's going to be a little mini cut um, for summer. Probably not going to get shredded. I'm going to take it nice and slow. That way I can still build muscle. Um, so really won't be that much in a deficit probably until April to May. Um try to get down about 10% and just maintain because I might compete in the winter of 2025 next year. I'm hoping, um, cutting in the winter time. I know, right. Um, but it, the cuts gonna be easy because I'm already lean. So it won't be that, it won't be like a four month cut. It'll be like a month cut. So, um, yeah, guys, that's the plan. So, uh, stay tuned.